know someone who's looking for a job. How many of you think you might be looking for a job sometime in the next five years? <coughs> it happens a lot more often in this day and age. 30 years ago, that most people had a job for life. Many of our grandparents or parents lived in that generation. But nowadays, people may have seven careers in their lifetime, much less different jobs. So it's a area of expertise that it's good to know how to get resources. We've handed out a, a handout where you can take notes, and I've all, also got my main uh, parts to my speech there for you, so you don't even have to put those down. The first part I want to talk about is selling yourself. Most of us hate to have to sell ourselves. Almost everyone I <coughs> know hates to have to job find. It doesn't mean you can't learn some things to make it easier. And one of the things that's really wonderful <coughs> is there are hundreds, if not thousands, of resources. If you go to any library, they're going to have shelves of books about resume writing, cover letters, job hunting, interviewing, negotiating. <coughs> so if you like to get things out of a book, you can do that. If you'd rather get things out of one-on-one, -on -one, or going to a class, you can get it that way. You don't have to grit your teeth and do it. The s second part is all the meat of job hunting, writing your resume. One of the things I want to say is make sure you get at least five people to look at it and give you feedback on it. It doesn't matter if they're an expert on resumes. Most of the people you'll be interviewing with are not experts on their resumes. They're just Joe Schmo, who's a manager, who has to hire somebody. So there is no right answer in resumes. It's how people react to something they <coughs> see personally. Some people, if they see Toastmasters on your resume, they'll go, oh, good. Other people will say, oh, I've heard of Toastmasters. It's probably a really stuck up person who wants to do Robert's rules. Um, cover letters, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that today. Once you get one or two or three cover letters written, you can make a couple changes in any others you have to s send. Nowadays, sending out resumes and cover letters is like 10 times easier than it was 15 years ago because it's on to, all done by email or online. One of the things you have to learn is dealing with rejection. We used to say that you have to send out 50 resumes for every one interview. <coughs> I think this is the hardest part of job hunting. I always say being an expert on job hunting, having lots of tools, having many marketable skills, after two weeks I get horribly depressed and think no one will ever hire me. <coughs> so what do people do that have a high school diploma <coughs> and no marketable? Skills. They've got to be really discouraged. <coughs> interviews are a very fun part of job hunting because you can practice them ahead of time. You can get together with a group and interview each other. You can figure out what your most dreaded <coughs> question is and have and come up with some answers to it. My dread, my hardest question has always been, um, what's your asking salary? When I first was, the first time I ever job hunted, I was earning $8,000 a year. And my first interview, he said, how much do you need to make? And I said, well, I would like to be paid similarly to the other people doing the same job. And he said, well, they'll, they are earning 15000 And I said, oh, I don't need that much. <laughs> so we have to pair, prepare for the follow-up questions and all that kind of thing. Um, 
the main thing about interviewing is practice, practice, practice. They have lists of questions you might get asked in an interview. <coughs> um, another fun thing is negotiating. There was a whole book once about the 30 things you can negotiate for after you've been offered the job. So if they offer you a salary and they're not negotiable on that, here's some other things. Now, I always do <coughs> negotiating. I say, I ask for something, they say no, and I say, oh, okay. So <coughs> one of the jobs I, I interviewed for, they said, this is the salary. I said, okay. I said, now I co I'm coming from Henry Ford Hospital mm -hmm. where they gave six weeks of combined vacation sick leave. And they said, we can give you two weeks. And I said, well, I can't. I need more than that. And they said, that's all you're going to get is two weeks. I said, well, maybe I could have three or four weeks. They said, you can get two weeks. I ended up with two weeks. Um, the rewards <coughs> of job hunting are very surprising. Even if you don't need to look for work, if you're just a little bit unhappy with your job, sometimes you get mad at your manager. <coughs> if you go out on a job interview, you'll probably get offered the job. And you can turn it down and realize that you do have choices. There are other people that would want it. <coughs> Another thing is, is it's just fun to go through the experience and see that everyone is an <coughs> expert job interviewer. Most people doing the interviewing are not comfortable doing it. They may be reading questions because they have to ask every single interviewee the same set of questions and they have a grid where they mark off how you answered it. <coughs> so they're not really listening to you. Um, I've got a, a bibliography that I'm handing out, which, which also has, um, no, the bibliography is on the back of the one you already have. This one is seven um, job hunting tips. If you turn over the first page you got, the one that had the three things I was going to cover today, you'll see I've listed three or four books and a bunch of job hunting. <laughs> Sites I found. My favorite book of all time is 28 Days to a Better Job. It actually was written in 1977 and it hasn't been reprinted. But you find it in a big library. And what it maintains is that in 28 days you can get a new job. Now they're talking about spending eight hours every day for 28 days, which none of us are going to do. But it has suggestions for each day of what you can be doing to look for a job. So if someone is doing a two-month job hunt, they can spend four hours a day and do what's in that book. The most famous book is What Color Is Your Parachute? And it's probably in its 75th reprint. It, there's a, 19, a 2011 version of it. Um, And there are hundreds of sites on the web where you can be very specific about what you want to know about job hunting or what your question is. Or like many other topics, they'll have experts that will give you answers or help you with something. <coughs> I want to go back to, I want to tell you my next chapter on my job hunting <coughs> series, which is for in here, which is going to be building your support system. It can apply to <coughs> your everyday personal support system and have nothing to do with job hunting. And then I want to go back to the quote I read. Don't wait for the storm to be over. Learn <coughs> to dance in the rain. If you have to job hunt, learn to make it as enjoyable as possible. <coughs> as unhorrible as well. <laughs> Thank you.
fill in your evaluations. When you evaluate Sarah, she's asked to please work finding at least one or two suggestions for improvement. That's the most helpful thing to, to her. So don't be shy. I can I, take I got it. A couple things here for you. Good. Personal success to me is being able to emulate Greg as a good president, <laughs> Manesh as a good speaker, BJ just as an all around good guy, the Toastmasters group, and most of the speakers to be able to speak to large audiences and impromptu sessions like this. It's just, I've only been in Toastmasters for about 11 months now, and I have learned a lot. I can actually see myself or hear myself becoming a better and better public speaker. And the opportunity to be the president of Toastmasters has given me a lot of success. It has enabled me to grow and to expand and become a better leader and a better speaker. Um, thank you very much. <clears throat> they would they would define themselves